In section 4.4, you will solve quadratic equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 by factoring. In this first example, we're going to factor 4z squared minus 12z plus 9. To factor this trinomial, we want to factor it into a, a binomial times a binomial. Now it's different from the trinomials in the last section in that our leading coefficient is not 1. So we're, it's going to involve a little more guessing and checking because factors of 4 could be 1 times 4 or 2 times 2 and factors of 9 could be 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. So I'm going to try to factor 4z squared into 2z times 2z. And then I can see that if I factor 9 into 3 times 3 and make both negative, I'm going to be able to uh, get my trinomial back. I'll check by distributing. 2z times 2z is 4z squared. 2z times negative 3 is negative 6z. And starting over, negative 3 times 2z is another negative 6z. And negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So adding the like terms in the middle, I get 4z squared minus 12z plus 9. That happened to be a perfect square trinomial if factored into a binomial times itself. So I can write it as 2z minus 3, the quantity squared. Okay, in this example we want to factor completely. Now that's a hint that there's a, a greatest common factor involved. And there is a common factor to all three terms, it's 2. So I want to factor out that greatest common factor first. I'll be left with 7x squared plus x minus 6. And I'll check by distributing to make sure I factored it correctly. 2 times 7x squared is 14x squared. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So it's factored correctly, but I still need to see if that trinomial factors into a binomial times a binomial. Factors of 7 are only 1 times 7, so I'm going to factor 7x squared into 7x times 1x. Factors of 6 could be 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. But because I need uh, 1x in the middle, I can see that I want to factor 6 into 6 times 1 because I can make the 6x negative and the 7x positive so that when I add negative 6x in the middle to positive 7x on the outside, I'm going to get positive 1x in the middle. And negative 6 times positive 1 is negative 6 for a third term. So those are the correct factors. And now this polynomial, this trinomial, is factored completely. Over here, we're factoring the difference of two perfect squares. But there's a greatest common factor of 4 in those two terms. So I'm going to factor that 4 out first. And what I'm left with is u squared minus 9. I'll just check 4 times u squared is 4u squared. And 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. Okay, This difference of two perfect squares that I'm left with will factor into a binomial times a binomial. The sum and difference are the square roots of those two terms. The square root of u squared is u, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I get as an inner product 3u, and as an outer product negative 3u. 3u plus negative 3u is 0, so that's why I have no middle term or u term in this binomial. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So our factors check and that binomial is completely factored. Okay, we factor so that we can solve by factoring and using the zero product property. Remember the zero product property states that if AB equals zero or a product equals zero, then one or both of the factors has to be zero. 
So then A equals 0 or B equals 0. So looking at this first equation, we're going to solve by factoring. We'll factor that trinomial on the left-hand side. And we've factored this trinomial already. We factored 9t squared into 3t times 3t. And we factored 4 into 2 times 2. And we made them both negative. So that that inner product, negative 6t, added to the outer product, negative 6t, gave us a negative total of negative 12t in the middle. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So this equation is factored, that trinomial is factored on the left, and we're ready to use the zero product property. We're ready to set both factors equal to zero and solve for t, but because both factors are the same, we only have to set one of them equal to zero to get our only solution. So solving for t, we're going to add 2 to both sides and divide both sides by 3. So we find out that t equals 2 thirds we get one solution to this quadratic equation. Our second equation involves a binomial. And there's a greatest common factor in common to those two terms. That greatest common factor looks like 7s. If I factor 7s out of the first term, I'm left with 2s. And if I factor 7s out of the second term, I'm left with negative 3. And again, I'll check by distributing to make sure I factored correctly. 7s times 2s is 14s squared. 7s times negative 3 is negative 21s. So it's factored correctly, and now I'm ready to use the zero product property. I'm ready to set 7s equal to 0. And 2s minus 3 equal to 0. So solving this first one, dividing both sides by 7 to get s alone, I get s is equal to 0. And the second equation, to get s alone, I'm going to add 3 to both sides and divide by 2. So my two solutions to this quadratic equation are 0 and 3 halves. Now look at this uh, third example. We need this equation in standard form in order to factor and use the zero product property. So we need zero on one side. And I'm going to move my terms on the left to the right in order to get zero on the left hand side. So I'm going to have x squared. And then I'm moving 3x from the other side, so it's going to be a negative 3x on the right. And when I add 6x to both sides, I'm going to have negative 10 plus 6, so I'm going to get negative 4. And now I'm ready to factor, factor the trinomial on the right into a binomial times a binomial. Factors of x squared are x times x. And because my leading coefficient is 1, I can ask this question again. Factors of 4 that have a difference of 3 are going to be 4 and 1. And I'll make the 4x negative and the 1x on the outside positive. So that negative 4x plus positive 1x is negative 3x in the middle. And negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. So that equation is factored correctly. And now I can use the zero product property by setting x minus 4 equal to 0 or x plus 1 equal to 0. And solving both equations to get my two solutions to this equation. In the first equation, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And in the second equation, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So my two solutions are negative 1 and positive 4. I can put them in a little solution set if I like. The two solutions are negative 1 and positive 4. Okay, in the first example here, we want to find the zeros of the function by rewriting the function in intercept form. Remember, intercept form is y equals a times the quantity x minus p times the quantity x minus q. And in that form, p and q are the x-intercepts or the zeros 
of this quadratic equation. So taking this equation and factoring, the greatest common factor is 1. It's the only factor in common to all three terms. So that means our a value is 1. And factoring 3x squared plus 14x minus 5 into a binomial times a binomial. The only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. So I'll factor 3x squared into 3x times 1x. And then I'll factor, factor the constant term 5 into 1 times 5. And I can see that if I put the 5 here and the 1 here, 1x plus 15x will equal 14x in the middle if I make the 15x positive and the 1x negative. Negative 1x in the middle plus positive 15x on the outside equals 14x in the middle. And negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. So one more step here so that I can see my p-value which is going to be one-third, and so that I can see my q value, I'll factor it into x minus one-third times the quantity x plus five. Picking out p, I see that that's a value of one-third, and picking out q from the second binomial, it's negative five. So my zeros, or x-intercepts, for this equation are one-third and negative five. Okay, in the second example, we want to factor g of x or put it in um, intercept form, but g of x has a greatest common factor in each term, a greatest common factor of five. So I'll factor that out first, that's our a value, and I'm left with three x squared minus x minus four. And again, distributing 5 times 3x squared is 15x squared. 5 times negative x is negative 5x. And 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. So, so far, it's factored correctly. And we'll factor that trinomial into a binomial times a binomial, putting g of x or y in intercept form. Factors of 3, again, are 3 and 1. So I'm going to factor 3x squared into 3x times 1x. I'll factor 4 into um, 4 times 1 so that I can let 4x be negative and 3x on the outside be positive. Negative 4x plus po positive 3x is negative 1x in the middle. And negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. Okay, one more step getting this in the form so that I can see my p and q values. I'm going to write this first binomial as x minus 4 thirds. And the second binomial is x plus 1. Okay, now I can pick out p and q. p again is 4 thirds and q is negative 1. So those are the zeros or the x-intercepts for that equation, 4 thirds and negative 1. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 3 through 21 multiples of 3 on pages 260 and 262 of your textbook.